allow me to correct some notation I've been doing incorrectly in previous videos. This is the notation for a vector with a caret on top, but in general, most most mathematical texts will treat this as a normalized vector, meaning length 1, which is the topic of this video. What I should be doing is drawing vector notation like this, with like an arrow on the top, except I'm missing one of the four feathers of the arrow. If I finish that, then that would look like a vector. and That's generally the the uh, symbol for a vector. Not necessarily, it's a vector, it's just not necessarily length one. So forgive me, if I if I do the caret, that, that uh, means length one, whereas this is not length one. And why is that important? Why is it important that we have normalized vectors? We'll see them all over the place when we do physics and graphics and that kind of thing. Very important. Anyway, I want to talk about normalizing a vector in this video. We need to do that because of the formula I've shown several times before. If I take A and I dot it with B, and we've seen that that is a very simple uh, multiplication of the elements and then addition of the elements, that will give us the same as taking the magnitude of A, the length of A, that gives us one number, it's simply the length of A, and it also the length of B, and then the cosine of the angle between the vectors. And I remember seeing this formula over and over again thinking, what is the big whoop? And it turns out after you've done a ton of vectors, you realize, wow, dot products are very important. And then in the last video I said, hey, if we could get this to a 1, the length of A to be a 1, and we can get the length of B to be a 1, then all we're left with is the cosine of, of theta. Alright, so then if, say, A's length is 1 and B's length is 1, and look, I'll even cheat here. I'll, I'll say, uh, Let's let's treat them as normalized vectors now that we understand the notation. Normalized a dot b, well, 1 times 1 is cosine theta. So, And we'll use that when we do computer graphics and especially the lighting equations when we start to light our scene. We'll get some normalized vectors. We'll dot them together and it gives us the cosine of the angle between them. But before we can do that, we need to know, well, how do we get vectors of length 1? Say I gave you a vector. Let's... Uh, Let's, let's go like this. This is my vector, and its length is 5. Let's say it's 5 units, so 1, 2. And what do I mean by units? If it's meters, it's 5 meters. If it's feet, it's 5 feet. It doesn't really matter. It's just a unit of whatever you're measuring your length in. So pretend these are lengths of 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This vector's length is 5. So if I want this vector's length to come down and be a length of 1, well, what do I need to do with the length of this vector, or this vector? I had a vector of length 5, I want to take it down to 1. Well, it's pretty straightforward. If, if its length is 5 and I divide that by 5, then the length will be 1. Ah, it's not really rocket science, believe me. So all I need to do is scale this vector down by its length, and that'll give me length 1. Let's say we had a vector, I don't know, hopefully that's still in the recording area. And that that is a straight line, I promise. Ooh, that's even worse. I'll probably I'll quit fixing that. But let's say its length is, I don't know, eight point two. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point two. And I want to turn this vector into a vector of length one. Well, all I need to do is scale it down, divide eight point two divided by eight point two will give us 1. Alright, so then I'm left with this this vector right here. Let me just draw it by itself. And now that vector just gives me a direction. Okay, yeah, it has a length of 1, and 1 could mean something. But generally, we're just interested in, hey, which way are you pointing? Are you pointing that way? Are you pointing that way? Are you pointing that way? You know, and if we if we take all these unit length vectors, and if, if I could draw the same length, this one needs to be a little bit longer. But hopefully you get the idea that if I took this unit length vector and spun it around on its tail, then that would give me a nice circle if I could draw better. So that's 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 the secret. To get a unit length vector, we simply scale it or divide it by its length, or we scale it by 1 over its length. What do I mean by that? Well, say we have this vector, and let's just say its length is 6. Okay, I could I could divide this one by... 6, so 6 divided by 6 would give me a length of 1. Or I could multiply it by 1 over 6. So 1 divided by 6 times 
the length of the vector 6, well that's the same thing, it's 6 times 1 will be 6 over 6, but same thing, it gives us a 1. So to normalize the vector, all we have to do is divide it by its length. So if I have the vector a, this is a vector, all I need to do is divide it by its magnitude, right? which is the same as saying, well, let's take the vector a and multiply it by 1 over its magnitude. No big deal. And we know how to get the magnitude, don't we? Don't we know how to get the magnitude? We did that in uh, the video not, not too far before this one. To get the magnitude, we take the square root of all the components added, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's do, let's do the vector. I want to bring... Oh, that's horrible. Let's do this. Let's do the vector of length 5 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'll give it a length 5. Well, I just so happen to remember that in order to get a a, a vector with a length 5 or a triangle, if you would, this looks like a triangle now that I've combined this basis vector with this basis vector. The length of this one needs to be 3, and the length of this one needs to be 4, so we have a 3, 4, 5. It's nice how that just kind of works out for us. 3, even though I might not be able to draw it perfectly to scale, 3, 4, 5. So if I looked at the individual components of uh, our resulting vector here, which I'll cover in red, or our resulting vector here, the, the individual components would be 3 on the x and 4 on the y. And I say x and y, but but that could get into linear algebra and non-orthonormal basis. And let's not worry about that. Let's, let's just 3 on the x, 4 on the y. Well, if I want to if I, if I scale this vector down to length 1, and I just told you that we needed to divide by 5. So this divided by 5 will give me 3 over 5 for the first component. And the second component will be 4 over 5. Well, I wonder, what's the magnitude of this? I, I say it's 1, but could we prove that it's actually 1? Well, what's the what's the formula for finding the length of a vector. Remember, it's the square root of the component squared, so it's going to be 3 divided by 5 times 3 divided by 5. There we go. There's x squared, if you would. I'll write that right there. x squared plus y squared. We're trying to find the square root of x squared plus y squared, and so 3 divided by 5 squared plus 4 divided by 5 times 4 divided by 5. Well, what, what does that turn out to be? Let's, let's grab the calculator here and ask the calculator. Here is our calculator, and I'll try to put it somewhere where you can see it. Let's do 3 divided by 5 first. So 3 divided by 5 equals 0.6, and then, then I want to multiply that by itself again. So 0.6 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.36. Let's add that to the memory of the calculator so it's sitting out there and the, we've stored it away temporarily. And then let's say 4 divided by 5 equals well, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times itself equals 0 0.64. And let's add that to the memory as well. Do you remember what we had in memory before? 3 divided by 5 times 3 divided by 5 was 0 0.36. 0 0.36 plus 0 0.64 is one and the square root of one is one. The length of a vector after I divide it, its individual components by its length, <laughs> is length one, which is what we want. A normalized vector, a vector of length one. Now don't get that confused with vector normals. All right, there's a difference between normalized and normals. And we'll get into normals very shortly with the wall reflection bounce thing. We're going to get a normal vector. But a normalized vector is a length 1, and a normal vector is something we'll see very quickly.